Hello everyone, Nathan here with Pixel Pipes, and I wanted to try something a little different. Actually, a whole new series called, as you saw in the intro, Pixel Fragment. What this is, is basically uh, just simpler videos, like one day uh, videos that I can put together quickly, um, just to talk about things that I don't necessarily think need to have a fully produced scripted video made about them. This could be I mean, well, generally, it's going to mostly pertain to graphics cards, but it could really be anything if I wanted to talk about a motherboard or a CPU or whatever. And I don't necessarily want to go into a big history, and, you know, lots of elaborate benchmarks. There could be some benchmarks uh, in this series, but for the most part, it's just going to be me rambling about something I think is cool or interesting. And uh, just kind of... Uh, yeah, just wanting to share something and uh, be able to put out, uh, you know, quicker videos instead of the, the usual, you know, month long or more uh, that it takes to put out a well-produced video. Not everything deserves that treatment. And uh, this next one falls into that category. I want to talk about this card right here, so you can see on the uh, finely written label. Uh, this is the Radeon X 1300 Pro AGP. Uh, so, yeah, um, this one is, uh, I like this card uh, quite a bit. And, you know, it's not necessarily something that, you know, I would need to go into a huge history on. It's a budget card from uh, 2005. And, you know, it's the AGP version. So what's interesting about it? Well... Uh, well, first of all, it's built on the RV515 GPU. It's uh, a chip that has 105 million transistors, which uh, is actually surprisingly close to the R300 GPU used in the 9700 Pro uh, card, which I made a video on previously for GPU June, which, by the way, this is technically a GPU June video. Uh, so there will be the whole usual hashtag GPU June and a link to the playlist in the description with tons more videos. It is an endless supply of videos for your enjoyment. So do check that out uh, if you want. So the story with this one is that it is a four pipe graphics card. So four pipes, uh, you know, was the standard and, you know, 2000, most of 2002 and earlier. And, uh, you know, would have been, again, in 2005, good enough for something like this, which is a budget-oriented uh, card. There was a faster version, uh, the X1300 XT, which is actually built on a uh, different chip, which I can have a look at here in just a second. But this one was only uh, four pipes, whereas the other one had uh, more pipes. If we take a look, for example, at my graphics card database, which is just a spreadsheet here, you can see, uh, scroll down a bit. So here's the X1300 Pro. Came at a clock speed of 600 megahertz on the core, 800 effective for the memory, uh, which was quite good uh, bandwidth wise for budget card. Four pipes. TMUs, ROPs across the board. You could either get it in the 256 or 512 meg version with a 128 bit bus. Hopefully, I think there were cheaper ones that came with less. And you got the pixel fill rate and the texture fill rate, which of course is the same. Uh, you've got the uh, shader uh, performance, which is in uh, mega flops. So that would be 28.8 uh, gigaflops. Of course, there's a DirectX 9C, typically came with DDR2 memory. And if we look at the X1300 XT, lower clocks, 500 megahertz on the core, 780 effective for the memory, but it has an RV530 chip, 12 pipes, uh, 12 shader pipes basically, four TMUs and ROPs. So similar fill rates in some ways, but the shading uh, performance will be much higher on this one. So yeah, this card is interesting to me because it is a pure 
four pi graphics card. So if we compare it to like a previous generation four pi graphics card, even a high performance one like this one here is of course uh, a 9600 XT as it says right there on the cooler. And the 9600 XT came out in 2003 uh, alongside the 9800 XT. It was a uh, refresh of the 9600 Pro that came at a core clock of 500 megahertz. Um, the memory typically came at 600 megahertz, but you could of course find variants like this one with higher clock memory. This one has 700 megahertz memory. What's interesting to me is this comparison specifically. Uh, so you have a card that is of a slightly newer architecture. This is the next generation up, sh supports Shader Model 3.0. This is only Shader Model 2.0. Higher core clock at 600 megahertz, uh, which is 100 megahertz more. And in this case, uh, 100 megahertz more on the memory as well. Now, what's maybe important to some people is, is that the 9600 Pro and the XT typically did not require external power. You can see there's a spot for it on the PCB, and I believe there are some variants that do have external power, but for the most part, they didn't need it. And effectively, this is, at least on AGP, uh, the fastest graphics card you can get that does not require external power, um, to my knowledge. And this one does. It has a floppy style. The Berg connector, as I now know it to be. So it does require external power. It could also be interesting to see how it compares to like an eight pipe graphics card, like say for example, a 9500 Pro. Um, so we can maybe do a little bit of a comparison between this, this, and a 98, uh, uh, sorry, a 9500 Pro, and uh, just see where it falls in line with those. And here is the 9500 Pro. Now, the reason why a comparison between this and these would be interesting is because the 9500 Pro has eight pixel pipes. Uh, in most cases, there were some versions uh, that were configured differently with four pipes and maybe more bandwidth uh, on the memory. Uh, but basically, this is your bog standard, typical 9500 Pro. Um, it uh, has the inline chips on the top, which means this only supports a 128-bit memory interface. Uh, some of these came from cut down 9700 cards, so they would have the L-shaped configured memory, which some cases could be flashed with a BIOS and unlocked to the full performance. This one cannot. So it is eight pipes, 128-bit memory, clocked much lower than these other cards. So only 270, uh, 75 megahertz, I believe, on the uh, core, and uh, effectively 540 megahertz on the memory. And as you can see, does require a power connector uh, in a kind of an awkward spot in the middle of the card at the top there. But anyway, this was a very good performer back in 2002 when it came out uh, alongside the uh, 9700 series cards and was only about 200 meg I'm sorry, $200, uh, which was a great value for something that still had eight pipes with just a lot less memory bandwidth, which made a huge difference to performance, obviously, but uh, maybe not as much as you might think. But compared to these guys, they only have four pipes, but they're clocked much higher. And in the case of this card, on a more advanced architecture. So how would it fare here? I mean, that's... That's what I'm interested in finding out. So let's uh, let's have a quick look at that. All right, so this is a uh, quick rundown of the benchmarks that I ran. Um, so you see here in 3D Mark 2001, uh, the X1300 Pro is in the lead by uh, several hundred points, uh, actually over a thousand points. Um, and it actually falls pretty uh, pretty linearly uh, between the three cards here, but this is an older test, so it's not very strenuous on the hardware, uh, really, per se. Now, if we go into 3Mark03, you could see that these scores are distributed differently. The X1300 Pro is still very much in the lead, actually has a significant lead over the other cards, uh, which 
uh, don't even break 5,000. Uh, with the 6237 of the X1300 Pro is uh, comfortably higher um, and 3 Mark 3 does use more shader tests. Then going into 3D Mark 5 again, the X1300 Pro has a pretty significant lead here. Um, this is a very shader uh, intensive test with Shader Model 2.0. And just the architectural enhancements along with the high clock speed allow the X1300 Pro to lead over the other cards. Um, interestingly, the 9600 XT does have a slight lead over the 9500 Pro, even though the, uh, this card does only have four pipes, and the 9500 Pro, as I said earlier, has eight pipes just clocked significantly lower, so you can see what a difference that makes uh, for uh, a more modern test. And then going into Sirius Sam's second encounter, um, the lead isn't quite as strong in the X1300 Pro, but it's still there uh, by a few frames. Unfortunately, not every game I tested has 1% uh, lows, because uh, just when I'm doing my standard uh, tests just to, you know, do a superficial evaluation of a card, I'm not necessarily using fraps every time. Uh, in this case, I'm using the built-in benchmark, which only has the average frame rate. But, uh, as you can see, the 9500 Pro is actually quite a bit behind the other cards, and I'm not sure why that is exactly. Um, this game obviously is an OpenGL game that doesn't use any real shader effects, but for whatever reason, having higher clocked four pipes is quicker than eight. And then going into Halo, of course we do have uh, the 1% lows represented here, um, and yeah, quite a bit higher for the X13 under Pro, very comfortable uh, performance uh, level here. Um, and actually the 9600 Pro, 9500 Pro are pretty much neck and neck, uh, almost pretty much within margin of error, both in the average and 1% lows, uh, which is kind of interesting. Unreal Tournament 2004, uh, not a shader heavy test uh, either, but you know, you do see the X1300 Pro marginally in the lead. It is interesting to see the 9600 XT uh, falling behind in this test. Um, again, more, you know, just basic, you know, texturing and uh, lighting, similar to Sirius Sam, uh, the second encounter, but uh, the 9500 Pro is faster here, so not sure why that is, but it's still interesting. And then going into Far Cry, we have, uh, again, as a, as a trend emerges, the X1300 Pro very comfortably in the lead, but the 1% lows are quite low in this game. And uh, none of them really turn in a very comfortable performance level. Like if you were to actually want to play the game at these settings, you'd probably have to come down a little on the resolution. Uh, but, you know... Um, it's still better than what the 9600 XT or the 9500 Pro are doing, uh, which are quite a bit lower. Again, 9500 Pro has a slight lead here, but it is a more shader intensive uh, test. Half-Life 2, um, I tested with AA and AF. And yeah, the 1% lows are terrible across the board here, especially with the X1300 Pro turning in an average of 64, but a 1% low of 20. Uh, really, I mean, that probably indicates uh, some, some bad hitching and just uh, uneven frames, which would not be pleasant to, uh, to play the game with. Again, you'd probably want to come down a resolution a bit for a really comfortable experience, but... Uh, you know, compared to the 9600 XT and 9500 Pro, which again have basically identical performance to each other, uh, yeah, that's not really playable either uh, for most people. In Doom 3, uh, the X1300 Pro has a huge lead over the other cards. Again, very close to each other. Uh, with the 9600 XT, again, falling behind by... Uh, a couple frames, but not by much, and it's been interesting to see how close they are uh, as we've been going along here. And then finally, averaging everything out uh, with the X1300 Pro, 
getting 76.4 frames per second um, in the six games tested versus the 9600 XT at about 60 frames and the 9500 Pro very similar uh, 57.9 so uh, yeah by far the X1300 Pro is faster than either of the other two um, making it the fastest four pipe graphics card dethroning the 9600 XT by quite a bit so yeah uh, that will uh, conclude this look at the Radeon X1300 Pro. Again, this is just sort of an experimental video. Um, you know, I find it interesting because it is a, a four-pipe graphics card, uh, basically on steroids. You know, running 600 megahertz on the core, 800 effective on a memory, and uh, you know, it's it's the. The performance it gets is far above what you would expect from uh, a card with four pixel pipes. And it's kind of that theoretical what if, or what if, you know, graphics cards never moved on from four pipes and you kept pushing the performance higher and higher. Um, it's uh, it's just kind of interesting. It's one of those uh, curiosity things um, that's well suited to a video like this. Um, and that's kind of what uh, pixel fragment is going to be going forward. It's just uh, videos that don't necessarily warrant, you know, the full scripted researched treatment, um, but uh, are still interesting to talk about. Um, and, you know, in a game like this, for example, Halo, you know, this performance is something you might have seen on, um, you know, high end graphics cards from 2003 say the 9700 Pro or the maybe even the 9800 Pro in, in some ways although I would expect the 9800 Pro to perform better overall um, just because it has more memory bandwidth uh, it's still no slouch and of course uh, if you do try to play old uh, newer games from the time the card actually came out it's not gonna be quite so pleasant but um, I would still say um, it's just, it's a very impressive card for what it is. Um, but that's really all I have to say about it. Um, and, you know, let me know what you think of this series. Um, this is, again, just kind of a new thing. Leave a comment below on your thoughts and maybe suggestions. And, uh, you know, normally if I were a bigger channel, I'd probably create a secondary channel to do a video like this. Uh, but I don't really feel like my channel's large enough to do a secondary channel and kind of split my audience between two different places. Uh, so I'm just going to put them all under uh, the this new uh, subcategory of videos and see how it goes. Uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed. And uh, yeah, take care.